I'm going to be talking to Ian Wright, who is an osteopath that I have worked with, who I have worked with for many, many years. We qualified together at the British School of Osteopathy, and then we've worked together for ever since, on and off. Absolutely. Uh, in Ireland and in London and in Tunbridge Wells. So here we go, Ian, over to you. Your first question. How did you first get into osteopathy? Right, okay. Well, I actually fell into osteopathy, really. I didn't really... <laughs> it was pure chance, really. I was straight out of school, um, 20, 21, 22 years old. Always knew I wanted to do something kind of along a medical line. Um, maybe medicine. I quite like the idea of nursing. I used to do a lot of nursing when I was a child. And I... Someone gave me the brochure for the British School of Osteopathy, and it sounded good. <laughs> and so I, uh, I thought, well, I tr I'll, have, I'll try that. And I quite like the location of the, of the, of the uh, you know, in, uh, just off Trafalgar Square there. And so, you know, I thought, well, why don't we try that? I couldn't pronounce osteopathy at the time. <laughs> but, yeah, so anyway, so I, I ended up, you know, at, at um, just 22 no, sorry, 18, forgive, yeah, that's, the, that's the right day, 18 years old, I finished at 22, um, at the British School of Osteopathy and um, not knowing anything about it, actually. And, and uh, you know how it is in life, you just fall into things. <laughs> so having fallen into... I, actually, I was, at, I was interviewed by Audrey Smith, and, um, which, which is quite amazing, and I couldn't pronounce osteopathy. <laughs> I said it completely wrong. <laughs> wonderful anyways so having qualified who or what has inspired you along the way mm, sure um i suppose when we were at, when we were studying at the british school um and we were together we studied it together and my favorite subject which actually you taught later was concepts of osteopathy um, and I loved the idea and the concept of osteopathy, but the osteopathy that we were doing in the practice didn't quite match up. And I was, I was a bit confused and I didn't understand because I wanted this beautiful, holistic kind of thinking. So I went out into, into practice, into normal practice, and I worked, practiced in, um, as an associate for about three weeks treating people with low back pain using, you know, this, the soft tissue techniques, et cetera, that we used in manip manipulation. And I thought, oh, this can't be all there is. And I thought I need to change where, what I'm doing and um, actually apply to do, to do a course in psychoanalysis, actually. Um, and thought, you know, I'll, I'll try and explore other, other areas. And actually, I, I, luckily, I didn't do that. But one day, a friend of mine said, you need to come to this clinic in London um, because, you know, and see what they're doing there. And I hadn't seen anything like it. And um, it was the Osteopathic Centre for Children. And I walked in and there was Stuart treating, doing some wonderful thing with this child. Um, and I was amazed. I, could, I had a sense that something was happening there. I could feel it. And I was like, this is incredible. So um, very quickly, obviously, as, as did you, um, joined Stuart's practice. And um, and then, in a way, uh, begun a, an apprenticeship. So with Stuart, actually with Stuart and Susie Booth, they they both kind of nurtured me for my first year. And my very first pr um, patient, um, when I first the first day I arrived there, um, was uh, my eight thirty patient was this child having this acute asthmatic episode and really struggling to breathe and I turned up late because I'd driven down from London and um and this, there's this child in distress and I you know fresh out of my studies I'm like this child shouldn't be here she should be somewhere in hospital or whatever and um Stuart came in and said do a CB4 and I had no idea what a CB4 was and so I kind of flummoxed myself for a minute luckily he came back immediately did something the child threw up and started breathing normally and I went oh my goodness wow what's happened we've scored this is um you know it's a whole different world suddenly we'd entered this hole and I'm, I'm i'm sure you 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 felt that same and we were suddenly 
from nothing treating incredibly complex patients with incredibly multi-system disorders, um, children, children with complex special needs, and engaging with it. And we were kind of thrown into the deep end. And, and I, you know, I know my first year, I, with pretty much every single one of my patients, uh, either Susie was there or Stuart was there, which was a wonderful gift for me. So those were both very, both very inspiring um, teachers from the very beginning, actually. Um, do you want me to go through all my, all my other inspirations? I, I can, certainly. So very soon, <laughs> we could be here all night, though. That's the problem. <laughs> That's um, what I found. So very soon. Yes, very soon. Um, we started, both of us started teaching um, cranial, um, undergraduate cranial at the British School of Osteopathy uh, with Martin Pascoe et al. And, um, and then I remember on, in 1995, on the first um, postgraduate five-day cranial course, um, I went to the airport and picked up um, Dr. Edna Lay, who was coming to be the kind of visiting lecturer on that course and you know and I was very young I was 25 and um, she obviously thought I was young and inexperienced so she spent a lot of that week teaching me how to teach cranial and she was of this wonderful school of osteopaths where she really worked she worked terribly hard it was quite strong work and you know I remember we 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 worked on a, a guy who had an occipitomastoid suture problem and she was sweating. She was there gripping it and, and we were all nearly passing out. It was unbelievable. And, and she taught me how to teach CB4s and, you know, and she said, if it's not happy, if it's not been going for eight minutes and the person isn't sweating, then you haven't done it. She was like a mountain. She came from Montana. She's wonderful. And so she was incredibly um, inspiring and then, actually, along that journey, I remember going to a lecture by uh, Sue, Sue Turner, actually, Susan Turner, and um, at, at the SCC. And at the time, we were, we were teaching at the BSO. And I was absolutely amazed by her incredible depth of love for osteopathy. It completely blew me away. It was beautiful. And I went up to her afterwards, and I said this to her. And... Um, and, and she said, well, come on, come and teach at the SCC. So, so I did ever since, which was kind of wonderful, actually. And, and she was very inspiring to because I, at the beginning years of working with the SCC, I would be on courses with her when we'd go all over um, Europe and everywhere. And she was a wonderful person to kind of as a lead teacher. And, uh, you know, and she has such a great love and uh, is a great inspiration that it was a wonderful, actually, for, for me to learn. Um, other teachers, I think, of course, that have helped me us understand. Because when you and I, we were working, when we were first working, practicing together, we, would, we, we taught each other, didn't we? Well, not, or taught ourselves with each other. So actually, you're an inspiration because, um, you know, we would work on Saturdays at Stuart Course Practice and we would treat patients together and we'd have one hand on the one, one per set of hands on the feet, one set of hands on, on the head, and we would feel what was going on in the patient. And... We didn't, that wasn't anything we were taught in terms of <laughs> osteopathy at all. It was, you know, and it was only when actually we were kind of like um, taught by Jim Jealous that he kind of put some terminology on that for us and working with the soft potency, et cetera, et cetera. So I think part of that journey, that wonderful journey of growth, and for me in terms of growth, it's group work, working in groups that helps develop I mean now we still when we're working with with the, the clinic in Ireland the, the, the Daisy Clinic in Ireland etc when you're working in a group team it's not you know you, we're, we're not teaching we're all learning together everybody is working together as a group and everybody grows and that's the wonderful gift that we have I think uh, and is given to us as osteopaths and of course the greatest teacher of all is the patients. Every patient, especially obviously some of these wonderful children that we treat with genetic conditions and special needs, and just the, the incredible gift of them showing us the way to their health. It's like, you know, what, what, what am, sometimes, you know, when you're teach, treating children like that, you just think, God, it's such an honor, isn't it? Just to, 
just to spend that time with them and facilitate them to find some a, a way of gaining more comfort. So there you go. There's a short answer. <laughs> Well, you've just got time then to answer the last question. What's the most important thing that you've learned, do you think? Well, I think from, I suppose, from all of those teachers, um, all different things, but probably the most, one of the most important thing, and I think that, that, that Jim Jealous was brilliant at teaching this, was actually, you know, and I remember we'd, I would go on, courses on the in the earlier days of the Jim Jealous courses um in Wales and I was with Jeremy Gilby on them and we we I remember we'd work together every time we do the first patient or with the first practical or lab he'd call it and we both look at each other and say okay we can go home now and we just you know what what we learned was to do a lot less and just to be present and to stop interfering with the treatment <laughs> that's the that's perfect <laughs> i think that's that's it but if you've got i think you might have a minute or two if you'd like to say something else but other than that i think well what i would say is what is the future of osteopathy is oh i think that we have this incredible gift this for me is the future of medicine. If we could, it, the more we can refine our tools, the more skill we can get, you know, it's incredible the potential of it. And we're all growing. And what's wonderful, and what's wonderful about the SEC is that it's everybody's growing together. And I love that. And that's why I'm involved. That sounds like an ad, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Ian. That's so marvellous. What a wonderful link you are in the chain. <laughs>